The History of the Atom, explained by me, Gandalf. A long time ago, the ancient Greeks thought that everything was made from tiny round spheres. They called them atoms, which in Greek language means indivisible, not invisible, like when Bilbo Baggins puts on that pesky ring, because they thought that atoms were the smallest things you could get, and you could get no smaller. They obviously hadn't met hobbits, because they're very small. Still, I digress. Let's get back to the story. John Dalton experimented on gases and proved this idea by the ancient Greeks to be true. I wish Dalton had experimented on the gases that come out of Gimli because there's something not right there. Dalton proposed a model of the atom that they were indivisible and indestructible. Oh, rather like me when I'm thrashing my wand and sword about. This model of the atom was called Dalton's Billiard Ball Model. At that time, billiards was a popular game that used snooker balls. But nobody plays it anymore because it's rubbish! And we've all got Xbox and Playstations! John Dalton's model of the atom remained the main model until 1897, when J.J. Thompson discovered atoms contained much smaller subatomic particles called electrons. Electrons were found to have a negative charge in hardly any mass at all. J.J. Thompson proposed a new model of the atom, which contained a sphere of positive charge with the mass evenly spread throughout, and with little electrons dotted about like plums in a Christmas cake. In the olden days, people used to call Christmas cakes plum puddings, so this new model of the atom was called J.J. Thompson's Plum Pudding Model. Thompson's Plum Pudding Model was accepted by most scientists, but during the years 1909 till 1913, Ernest Rutherford led two scientists, Hans Geiger, and Ernest Marsden in a very important experiment which is now famously known as the Rutherford Gold Foil Experiment. In Rutherford's experiment, positive alpha particles were fired at a thin piece of gold foil. If Thomson's model of the atom was correct, the alpha particles should have all just passed straight through the gold foil, hitting the screen straight ahead. Most of the alpha particles did indeed pass straight through, but some deflected at large angles. Most surprisingly, some alpha particles, approximately one in every eight thousand, actually bounced back to where they had came from. Rutherford concluded that the plum pudding model of the atom must be wrong. Rather like the decision for the fellowship walking the ring to Mordor, instead of getting the eagles to just drop us off at Mount Doom, so we could melt the ring and be done with the blasted thing. Rutherford pondered over what these results meant for two long years. He concluded that the positive alpha particles were deflected because they had came close to something that had a concentrated positive charge. And for only some of the alpha particles to bounce completely back from where they would came from, they must have hit something very small and dense. Just like that fool of a took, knocking that bucket down the well and waking those cave trolls. From the results, Rutherford concluded that there must be a very small nucleus in the center of the atom, and that has a positive charge, and is where most of the mass of the atom is found, and that electrons orbit around the nucleus. So, 
Rutherford had discovered the nucleus. <laughs> Rutherford presented a new model of the atom to his fellow scientists. This was accepted and replaced. J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model? Rutherford called his new model the atomic model. It had a central positively charged nucleus where most of the mass of the atom was found, surrounded by orbiting negative electrons. In 1913, Niels Bohr carried out experiments on the hydrogen atom and discovered some results that Rutherford's atomic model could not explain. Bohr proposed a change to the atomic model based on quantum theory that said electrons can only orbit the nucleus at fixed distances inside what he called electron shells. This new model of the atom is called the Bohr model and is our most up-to-date model. Model of the atom. And so, this is where our story ends, I fear, with the Bohr model. At least, until the next leap forward in our understanding of the atom and how the universe works. So I bold you farewell for now. And just remember, you children, who shall not pass? Your exams, unless you use my YouTube channel to help you revise. Thank you very much, and goodbye for now.